Today on Pots and Trials, we're going to be planting asparagus, and that's brought to you with the support of Cobra Garden, Dalak, and Mr. Fothergills. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. Well, this week we're in Malcolm and Jenny's garden again and we're going to do some asparagus planting. Perfect time now, middle of April to the end of April to get asparagus in so you can establish an asparagus bed. So this is where we're going to do it and I'm going to show Malcolm how to do it so he can plant some more. And Malcolm's got the asparagus, it's been delivered. Malcolm, let's have a look at this asparagus. Let me push my fork in there. So this is it. So are you excited about planting asparagus yeah, in your garden? I am indeed. This is the first time you've planted it? Uh, in theory, yes. Yeah? But I'm a Vale of Evesham man, remember? Oh, are you really? So oh, you know what? Aunts and uncles grew it professionally. Oh, of this. So why am I planting this for you? <laughs> it's because my dear wife, Jenny, wants some asparagus. Right. And the local source is finishing it's this going, year, It's going, that's right. So here we've got five crowns. So this is how you buy asparagus at this time of the year. These are uh, crowns, what how, we call. How old? I think these are two-year crowns, aren't two they? They'll either be one or two. They, they're yeah. good. They're very good crowns. Yeah, yeah. And we can see there we've got the the buds just starting. So there'll be two or three dormant buds there, just starting to to break, which will produce the the growth. And you've got these thick, fleshy, spidery roots on asparagus, and and that's what we've got to make sure that um, we can get those established because it's all about storage on those. Right. So, and this is a, a male variety, I think, is it uh, Gim Gimlin, I do believe, yes. isn't it? Which is a, so. a hybrid, really good producer. So put the lid on those so the sun doesn't dry the roots out. So this is the bed we're going to put them in. It's a raised bed. The soil in the garden here is really well drained anyway. And that's one of the key things with asparagus. They need good drainage. If you've got clay soil, build a raised bed or plant them on ridges but you've got good soil here and you've improved this a lot over the years haven't you Malcolm Indeed. by the look of it Put some more compost yeah I mean if I just dig there we can see that that is really really lovely soil so first thing we need to do is to make sure wherever you're going to plant your asparagus bearing in mind asparagus is probably going to be there for the next 20 to 25 years it's a long-term crop so you're looking forward to 25 years of asparagus malcolm um, what we need to do is to make sure it's weed free especially perennial weeds things like cooch grass uh, docks and dandelions uh, bindweed any of those weeds that come back year after year we need to get rid of so there is a bit of cooch grass in here and other grass so we're going to spend a little bit of time first of all actually not digging it in we want to fork it out so that we can get the roots out as well so vital that you do that soil preparation so I'll do this side Malcolm right. you can do that side and we need to get rid of all these weeds so we've got a really good clean start Lovely. Nice, big worms in it. So we want all these long roots need to come out. And we're not going to put those on the compost bin. I know some people are now saying you can put cooch in the compost bin and it will rot down. It will only rot down if you get it very, very hot. So it's not worth the risk, in my opinion. Never put this into your compost seat. Look at that, there's a good one there, Malcolm. Right, so we've got rid of all the weeds there. We've got a, a good bucket full of cooch grass root weeds there. So uh, that's good. Dug it nice and deep so that the roots can get down. It's very light and springy, so we don't want it to be too springy because it will just dry out too quickly around the roots. So I'm going to give it a little firm. So the best way to do that is you can use your feet. So I'm literally just going to firm it down. And Malcolm, could I ask you while I'm doing this, to get the string line and then when we've raked it again we can put the string line down ready to dig the trench so it is literally just firming it i'm not consolidating it i'm just squashing a little bit of the air out of there so that it means that when we do plant the soil will be in contact with the roots so that's all we need to do and you would do this if you're preparing a seed bed to sow seeds as well um, we want firm but not compacted and then to finish it off I'm just going to use the fork just to we're going to actually dig this in a minute don't dig a trench so we don't have to be too particular at this stage i'm just raking out my footprints really 
and giving us a, a level surface so we can put the string line out and mark it out to do the next stage. Okay, so what we're doing is we are putting in a string line now, which is gonna mark the row. So we're gonna put two rows in here, in this bed. So we're gonna have two rows of five with roughly two feet, maybe 60 centimeters between, and we're gonna space them about 18 inches or 45 centimeters on the row. So nice, tight string line, just to give us a mark, because what we're gonna do is to dig out a trench. So if I start at one end, Malcolm, and you can start at the other. What we're aiming to do is to dig out a trench the width of a spade. So I'm just going to slice that down. And then we're just going to dig, and we're going to put the soil that we've dug out onto the bed at the side. Okay, so it seems a lot of work. You think, well, I could just dig a hole with a trowel, but you remember the size of that big root we can't do that. So we're going to dig out a trench and then we're actually going to finish up putting some soil back in it. So it is quite a detailed job to get it ready for planting. So as you can see there, width of a spade, try and make the sides straight. It just makes it easier for positioning. And I'm going to be not a full spade depth, but I'm going to be a good sort of, I don't know, six to eight inches deep which is i don't know 15 to 20 centimeters so you can see there we're getting a good trench in the, along the base so we're going to do that all the way along and then malcolm's heading towards me right so once the trench is out um what we can also do is to add a little bit of extra organic matter and Malcolm makes wonderful compost from all his herbaceous cuttings that are chopped down and shredded. So just to give them a little bit of extra, look at the worms in there as well. So it's really good. This is going to be great. I'm just going to, or we are just going to put a little bit along the base, not too much, maybe just a couple of inches on the base of the, the trench and then fork that in lightly so there it is in the base and then I'm just going to fork that in and again what that does is breaks up any harder layers deeper down so it just will allow the roots of the asparagus to go down and of course that compost if you've got well rotted manure what that will do is to retain moisture as well through the summer which is important and then the final thing we're going to do is I'm going to use my small spade we've got the trench which is the shape of the bottom of the spade but I want to make within it a little ridge and you'll see why in a minute so I'm just going to you have to use your fingers a little bit for this so oh, don't cave in so I'm just putting a bit of soil in and then I'm going to use you could use a trowel but I forgot to bring mine so I'm, I'm going to make a ridge almost like a potato ridge like that all the way down so that when we put the roots in they will straddle that ridge as if it's like sitting on a saddle so again it seems to a little bit of root there it seems a lot of preparation but it really really is worth it so Malcolm do you want to do a little bit down at that end because you've got to practice because you've got a trowel you've got to practice because you've got another five to plant later on. So it's only a need a little bit and then we can form it up to make that ridge like that. Okay, I might just go a little bit more there. We want the ridge, the top of the ridge to be about two or three inches at the most from the top of the the trench so probably just a little bit more because otherwise we're going to bury it too much so we can just form that up like that and then we're going to get to the exciting bit which is the planting
Jenny's come from, these are one year crowns, so really strong, healthy crowns. So just a little bit of preparation. These have got good, thick, fleshy roots, which is what they want. That's full of moisture, which is ideal. So these are the roots and the crown bit is the bit literally where the buds grow at the top. And we can see there's going to be three, four potential uh, ferny growths appear this year. So just a little bit to do. Any dead bits we would trim off. So these are the remnants of last year's stalks. So I'm just going to trim those back. We want those out of the way. But the, and then the roots are good. If you get any damaged roots, like a damaged root here, you can just trim it off. In fact, what I'm going to do, these are very, very long roots and these are going to be quite difficult to, to spread into the soil. So what I'm going to do is to, to cut them back to about there. So I've still got plenty, but I'm taking off these straggly bits there. So it's just a case of a clean cut. So where we've cut them off, they will produce more roots. And then in here, I've got a bucket of water with just a little bit of seaweed, very, very dilute. So it's just to make sure that they are moist when we plant them. So I'm just going to check the five, give them a slight trim and put them in the water and then we can space them out. And these want to be making sure you don't cut the new shoot off, of course. Yes, just only the old, um, the old remains. So one, two, three, and four. That one's damaged there, as you can see. And then finally, this one here. So making sure I don't damage that lovely shoot. We don't want to. Now, the sad thing is we can't actually eat any of these this year. They won't be big enough to eat. They're just going to produce quite thin, spindly shoots. But it, the first year of growing asparagus is to build up the strength of that root. They get really thick and fleshy. Next year, you can probably cut the odd one, but it's year two when you can really cut them. So they literally only need a minute or two in there to just to fully hydrate. So we've got our five here. So Malcolm, if I give you a couple, if we start with the one in the middle, we're planting five. So that seems the logical one in the middle and then we can space them out. So what we do is we've got our ridge here and we literally part the root. So we've got roughly half on one side, half on the other. And we can then just fan the roots out along the base of the trench so that the crown is sitting on the top. Now, I don't know if it springs up a little bit because the soil will hold it down, but the main thing is to give those roots a nice root run like that. So we're going to put the one in the middle, one at the end, and then we can fill the gaps with the others to get our five in. And we're aiming for about um, 18 inches apart. They look about even to you, you're the engineer, you're good at gauging things. I think they're even, Martin. Yeah, to the nearest eighth of an inch. I would think so. <laughs> okay. 16th of you. Oh, really? Brilliant. So what we've got to do now is backfill. And this is where we need to be a little bit careful because we don't want to damage these shoots. And these little shoots here are, if you take a line across, they're, they're probably an inch or two below the surface of what's going to be the finished level just there. We don't want to just chuck heavy soil on. So just very gently, uh, using a spade, I'm just going to trickle the soil in and just just guard these little shoots. If they do snap, it's not the end of the world. They will grow some more from some dormant buds. So it's just a case of working your way down and then using your fingers, not your feet on this occasion. We're just going to down the side, so not on the ridge, just to firm the soil. And you could almost use your hands if you want to and just pull that soil gradually in. It's just nice to get your fingers in the soil. The worms are in there, they're going to love it. And then just firm it down and keep going until you get to the level like that. And use your hand and we can finish it off with a, a fork and rake it along. So Malcolm, do you want to start at the other end? No. I don't know. I'm not in the way. No, you're not in the way, Malcolm. No, I just want you to do some work. <laughs> And then, of course, the other thing is we've got to make sure in line where the ridge is, you've got your stick because the, the ridge is exactly where they're going to grow in a few weeks time. Now, we haven't put any fertilizer in here purposely because this is really good soil. And what I like to do is wait until they start to grow through. And as soon as we see that first signs of growth in, it might be two or three weeks, depending on the weather, then I would probably just put a sprinkle of 
grow more or blood general fishing purpose, but just yeah, yeah just a general purpose whatever you've got malcolm yeah. um just sprinkle it along the row and if it turns very dry you might need to just give them a, a little drop of water and that is it look forward to lovely asparagus and if you're finishing off with a fork only push your tines literally you just rake in the surface just to give us a nice even finish and then in a year's time you'll get a little bit in two years time Jill and I'll come round and we can have some asparagus with you. Brilliant. Look forward to that. Well, thank you for watching Pots and Trials and thank you to Malcolm and Jenny for letting me help them plant their asparagus. And you are going to keep me posted how this grows. Indeed we will. Okay, and the first taste. And the first taste. <laughs> I'll bring the eggs for poaching, you supply the asparagus. You're invited, you've got the chickens, That's we've right. got the asparagus. And remember you can watch this and all the other videos on Facebook and on YouTube. And next week we're going to be back in the veg garden down at Dennis's doing some planting and sowing. So we'll see you then. Bye.